Doker here and today we're going to replace a Molex connector and we're going to show you how to properly crimp the wires. A lot of people have expressed that when they crimp wires for a Molex connector that they just can't get the crimp right and the wire comes out or they get a crappy connection or they like to solder them in because they just can't get them crimped right. The big thing with these is using the correct tools. Um, I've got right here I've got my X-Lite flush cutters from Bob Roberts I think these things run about six bucks these are awesome you can't beat them the price you can't beat Bob is the man uh, these little guys here these are Radio Shack cheapies uh, flush cutters I don't know they run about six bucks too they're okay they'll, they'll do the job in a pinch but I like the X-Lite a lot better these guys are just your standard wire strippers. You can pick them up at any automotive store, Walmart, Kmart, anywhere you want. Uh, they will not crimp these Trifurcon pins or the regular pins at all. They're only good for stripping wire. Um, the next set, okay, uh, these are just, again, wire strippers. Wire strippers are wire strippers. Use whatever makes you feel good, whatever makes you happy, whatever helps you sleep at night. Me, I'm a tool whore. You know, I've, I've got all kinds of tools. These guys here are the Waldem HT1921 that Bob Roberts sells. These will crimp your Trifurcon pins and your regular pins, but they don't do a very good job. There's just there's just too much too much gap in the A and B, and they they leave a bad crimp. A lot of times when you crimp with these, you're going to have to uh, re might have to catch in those pliers and adjust the crimp. Uh, the other problem with these is you have to crimp both the wire area and the shield area. Um, let's see, shield area. The colored area on the wire, you have to crimp both areas when you use these. Uh, I do use these quite a bit, and what I use these for is stripping wire. I'm very comfortable with stripping wire with these, and uh, I also uh, use the uh, bolt cutters and cut bolts down with them but uh, as far as crimping Molex pins I do not use those. What I do use are these. These are open barrel crimpers and you can get them at Action Electronics and several various other places. They run about $25, maybe 30 bucks. And the unique thing about these, I don't know if you can see good enough as I spin it around a little bit, in the jaw area there are two different levels. There's one level for the wire area and there's one level area for the um, for the, the jacket, the shielding. So you get both crimps at the same time. It has two different sizes. This size does your .156. This size will do your .100 and uh, the large size will be your .093 pins, your .084 pins, the small size will do your .062 pins. The only pins that we're going to do tonight are some Trifurcon pins. We're going to put a new connector uh, on our big ass heat sink that was burned up from the other video and uh, we're going to show you the, the quick down and dirty on it and here we go. We're going to move it underneath the magnifier, and so hopefully we can see everything. And the easiest way to do this, since these wires are all color-coded, and that yellow one's out there by itself, quickest, easiest down and dirty is just to cut them all. And you say, oh my god, I'm going to wire this up wrong. Well, you can't wire it up wrong, because you've got all the colors still in the old insulation displacement connector. Now, the polarizing key, if you look closely, it goes orange, blue, there's nothing there. That's where the polarizing key goes, black, green, yellow, white, and the one that burned off was yellow. If you chase this around, you'll find that the locking area is right here where my thumb's at. And so our new connector, our new wonderful Molex with the locking ramp, Got the locking ramp on the same side. We keep following it around. 
and our third pin from the left is our polarizing key. So I take my polarizing key, little square peg, and you get these from Bob Roberts for about a dime. You get them from Mouser, they're about a dime. Just about anywhere you go, they're about a dime. Uh, it kind of sucks because the pins are a lot less money than these. Anyway, just slap him down in there and he's good to go. Now, I'm going to strip these wires, and we're not going to show you that because uh, it's just easier for me to strip them. We'll show you what they look like after they've been stripped. I mean, everybody knows how to strip wire. I mean, come on now. It's not that, not that big a deal, but it's easier for me to, to strip them off to the side, and then we'll pin them up and show everybody how to pin them up. It's going to take me a couple seconds here because I need to even, even up these wires and true the wires up so that the wires are all the same length. Yes, and I'm shooting this stuff all over the house. Uh, actually, it's all over my garage. It's one of the things my wife's happy about that I don't do this in the office anymore because I used to shoot her uh, with little chunks of wire and that used to piss her off. I just thought that it kept her awake. Works good for me. But when you're wiring several harnesses and you shoot these over on her desk, she gets a little bit cranky. Uh, I got to deal with her. So I don't do that in the office anymore. Now I'm banned down here to the garage, sucking it up. I got to tell you, in, even in my squeaky chair, it's cold down here. That was another thing. I like my other chair better. It's not cold. Feels good on my butt. Oh, wait a minute. That's too much information. Never mind. I'll let that one slide. Okay, I just got the last of them done. Let me slide these back underneath the magnifying glass. And you can see that what they have is I've taken them down right about an eighth of an inch. Now um, I can find my trifurcon pins. Trifurcon pins, uh, they, they uh, make contact on three sides because these two little legs right here, they're wonderful. I use them on just about everything. Some people say they're overkill. Well, I kind of disagree. I like them. Now, as I turn this thing around, should be able to see it. It'll make it even easier. What you want, ideally, is if you look at the two different separations, there's wire separation up front, and then in the back is for the jacket. You want to have equal area for the jacket and the wire. You don't want the wire pushing way through. You don't want the jacket uncovered. And when you use these open barrel crimpers from Action Electronics, this is the crimp that you end up with when you're done. It did both of them and it's nice and tight. And on occasion some of the ends where you have to put these on, you know, either the left end or the right end, the crimp is, is a little too good, and you need to add, make it a little round. Well, that's where these HT1921s come in real handy. You just stuff the connector in like that, and just give her a little squeeze, and that moves it just enough so that this thing will slide right in that connector like butter. It's wonderful. A couple seconds here to get these other five pins on here, and I'll show you how quick and easy they go right into the connector. Your .100s are no different; they work the same way. The uh, .062s, uh, they're a little more difficult to work with because they got longer tabs on them. .084s, they're kind of in the middle and their tabs are mm, fairly easy to work with but the whole process is going to be the same throughout so if you can do these you can do any of them there's no reason to ever have to solder these in if you have to solder these in you're not crimping them right 
One thing that, that people have a tendency to do that makes these bad, bad joints is they'll take the wire to right here and crimp it in like that. Now if you crimp it in that way, that's a bad crimp. You need to have the part of the shielding in there to get crimped in and the wire in the wire crimp area. I've, I've seen that quite a bit. And uh, that'll, that'll make a pretty good connection for a little while. Not very long though. And then if you tug on it, well, you should tug on it before you put it together. And that should tell you that it, hey, it just, it's a bad crimp because here's the wire in my hand. And, um, but apparently some people just uh, crimp it and go and throw it in there and hope that it's good. And then they come on and post and snivel later. Well, we're going to avoid all the sniveling. And we're going to do it right the first time. Now, for reference, I know that yellow is on one end and orange is on the other end. So those two, I'm going to true up those two crimps with my HT1921s. Make sure those two just slide right in there. There's that one. And here's the yellow one. The rest of them should go in without without cause. And let's give it a shot here. This yellow one goes right here. And you should be able to hear these click. If you don't hear it click, you should be able to see in the back that the tab has locked in to the this re open recessed area. And let's see, uh, green, black. Is that right? Yeah, green, black. Okay. And the green one, here to click. Black one, here to click. Oh, crap. I forgot to put the white one in. So. Well, you get a little bonus feature. A little bonus feature is how to get these back out of here. Hey, that works. Now, Bob sells a tool for this, and the tool's kind of spendy. I think it's uh, 10 bucks for a little piece of spring steel. But if you just de depress these little guys, and this is a Bob Roberts special screwdriver for adjusting monitors, and it just pops them right back out until they get stuck, like this one did, which happens. Just pop it right back out, and we'll pretend like we didn't make that mistake. And we'll go yellow-white, so I get this all untangled here. Okay, yellow-white, that clicks in. and green black our key and then she goes blue and the last one is of course orange and we all heard that one click that's what it looks like that's how quick and simple it is it's that easy and like you say uh, if you make a mistake they come, they come right back out. They're real easy to get back out. It didn't tear up the pin. Uh, just put it all back together and it matches our original. Except it now has the yellow and it won't burn up. Providing that you change the header at the same time. If you, if you change these connectors and don't change a burn up header, you will only get three to six months. Almost guaranteed before it burns up and fails again. That's what we've got for today.